welcome again to another episode of Unedited. Um, I've been thrown into the mix because Malvo is DJing in some fancy location. However, I've been blessed with um, none other than Eden Silver. So, you, you know, you started tennis at three years old, uh, top 10 in the UK, um, and starred at Wimbledon this year. So tell us a little bit more about your journey. Yeah, um, I started at three years old. It was a local tennis club close to my house. I think my mum and dad just wanted to get me out of the house and do some activities. Um, so I started there and I think they saw that I was, you know, enjoyed it, was pretty good at it. So just started to go there and take lessons yeah. sort of every week. Um, then ended up playing my first international tournament at eight years old. Wow. So that's pretty young. When I think back to eight year olds now, I'm like, wow. Am I right in saying you've just won your first pro singles tournament in five years? Is yeah, right? so earlier this, year? earlier this year in Amazing. April, yeah. I mean, I think like a lot of things in life, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs and yeah. it's not always smooth sailing for most of it. So I won my first pro singles tournament in 2017 and now it's 2022. Yeah. So it's a long, long time, but you just need to keep, you know, persevering, yeah. keep getting up in the morning and putting in the work. It's not always rewarding. You know, you sometimes you work hard or train hard, you go to a tournament and lose, but you got to just keep bouncing back and keep putting in the work. and. I think that really paid off this year. Yeah. Had a good year, I'm at a career high ranking. Yeah. So it's, a, it's been so, a good year. I mean, it's, it's amazing to see that kind of level of growth and at such a young age as well, I think only 26. So, yeah. um, and obviously one of the big talking points at Wimbledon this year, I think was Nick Kyrgios mm -hmm. wearing a pair of Jordans. I think, were they red? Yeah, red Jordans. So it caused a bit of an uproar yeah. at Wimbledon because, you know, Wimbledon is known for, you have to wear all white at yeah. all times. Um, so I think he got a bit of a, a hefty fine yeah. for that. But I think it's sort of, he's he is who he is and he likes to bring that onto the tennis court, which I think is a good thing. He yeah. keeps the sport entertaining and everyone always wants to watch Curious when he goes on court. Yeah. Um, he obviously loves fashion, so, you know, good for him. Yeah, yeah. Well, ho hopefully, we can get you on the court with a pair of our sneakers soon. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd love that. I definitely, I'm not sure I'd be able to play with them on. Yeah. I might fall over a few times, um, but definitely walking on or as soon yeah. as I'm finished the match, Amazing. slip them on. All right, that's a, that's a deal. Yeah, that's a deal. We've got, got that. <laughs> We've got that. You've got that on camera now, so that, that's going to happen. But um, just moving the conversation on. So like, you, obviously you're, you're from a kind of a mixed ethnic background. T tell us a little bit about your, your heritage. And... Yeah. My uh, dad is originally from Sri Lanka right. and my mum is Russian. Right. So yeah, um, it's quite an odd mix. Not a lot of people guess that mix yeah. when they're trying to figure out where I'm from originally. Yeah, yeah. It kind of leads me on to the next thing. You know, you've been a huge advocate for supporting uh, the involvement of, you know, ethnic minorities in sport, both male and female. So tell us a little bit more about that and I guess why it's so important. Yeah, I mean, I think it's so important to try and get younger kids from ethnic backgrounds to get involved in tennis, but yeah. it's all well and good getting involved in tennis, but it's a very expensive sport once you get involved and you yeah. want to carry it on. So trying to make training and tournaments and travel a lot more accessible for them and doable for them, I think is really important. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, I'd like to think that I'm a role model for a lot of those kids and hopefully the better I do the more I inspire those kids and hopefully give them hope that they can do the same thing. And I, you know and I guess what's really interesting actually in the, in the sneaker world um, and you may not be familiar but you know there's this huge uh, conversation at the moment about the rise of the female sneakerhead you know are, are we putting enough importance on women in sneakers and of course you've seen that kind of diversity and inclusion across many um, industry, but you know, we, we're certainly here at the Edit London kind of pushing, um, you know, that agenda. And I see obviously here you're flexing some, yeah. uh, some dunk, dunk high <laughs> aluminium. So, no, great, great to see. Um, okay, so before we get on to the, the quick fire rounds, how would you describe your sneaker collection? You know, is this something you've just started? Are you de are you deep in, like, like myself? Kind of what's the I'd like to have more, I won't lie. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I do, I've always liked wearing sneakers. I'm definitely a kind of girl that prefers sneakers over heels, yeah. especially with what I do. I'm, I'm, I always wear comfy clothes and you know, when you're at airports, going from one tournament to another, yeah. you're in sneakers pretty much 100% of the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's definitely something I'd like to have more of a collection of. Yeah. 
Um, and yeah, I mean, if I could have this in my yeah. house one okay. day, <laughs> I think that I can say I've made it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Getting onto like the quick fire section of this interview, mm. um, you know, would you consider yourself a sneakerhead? Yeah, I think so. If you ask me if I'm a heels girl or a sneakerhead, I'd go more sneakerhead. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Okay, we'll take that. <laughs> um, and I guess, what, what is your favourite sneaker at the moment? Um, I do like the, the Dunks. Uh, I like most Jordans as well. Um, I'm going to sound really basic here, but I love Air Force Ones. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like they're classic and they don't ever go out of style, really. I think I think every single sneaker collector has, has a pair yeah. of just pristine oh, white white ones. Air Force Ones. Yeah. I mean, it's just such a nice... When you open the box and they're fresh whites, you know, it feels amazing. You can't, you can't beat that. And if you could pick any sneaker to uh, brand to collaborate with and I guess we've got a few on the wall here but I guess who, who, who would you pick and why? It would be Nike for sure just because I think they've got such a great variation of yeah. so many sneakers yeah. um, you can style them like I feel like even if you wear a nice dress you could wear yeah. a lot of the Nike Jordans, Air Force yeah. Ones, whatever, Dunks and it would look good. Okay so that's the that's the last of the the interview um, but we're not done there we're going to dive into a sneaker challenge. All right sounds good to me. <laughs> Okay, so before we get into the sneaker challenge, mm -hmm. um, you've been described as fierce. I think you've got it tattooed yeah, on you, Yeah, I've right? got stay fierce at the back of my neck. That's it, okay. <laughs> um, well, looking at the sneaker wall, like which sneaker here represents fierce? God, there's a lot to choose from, yeah. but I think I'm gonna go with these. Okay. Just because, you know, they're Jordans. I think Jordans are just fierce trainers in general. Yeah. And I do love the all black. I think that kind of gives off a really fierce or sort of badass vibe. So I'd definitely wear those if yeah. I was going for a fierce look. And part, part of this challenge is about ringing up the biggest bill you possibly okay. can. We've Got already it. had, we've already had Morgan. I know, I'm going to try to beat them. <laughs> we've, we've had Franklin, that's it. But you've got to pick three. You're only allowed to pick three. Ring up the biggest bill. Which three are you going to go for? First, I'm going to go with the Dior ones, just because it's Dior. Yeah. And I'm like thinking about this logically, okay. whether it's true or not, we'll yeah. find out. So this is a Dior collaboration with Cactus Jack, so Travis Scott. Mm -hmm. This shoe is £1,299.99. What's your, what's pick number two? I'm going to go back to the Jordans okay. and I'll pick these ones just because blue is actually one of my favourite colours. Yeah. It looks like it's a sort of limited edition colour, I don't know. I mean, this is one of the first collaborations that Travis Scott brought out with Jordan. Okay. Um, so this is, this is the, the Jordan for Travis Scott um, and producer. The, the price on this is £1,777. Ring up quite nicely. But we've got one more shoe to yeah. pick. Which, which, which one are we going to go for? I'm going to go with the Louis Vuitton. Blue again, I'm keeping okay. it a blue yeah, theme. Yeah. And I'll go with the, the blue one just because I feel like it's a different design to the other four. Yeah. So I'm thinking it might stand out in price, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this LV trainer is £2,000. Sneaker challenge over. Producer, can you, can you run, ring up the final bill? What have we got? We've got five thousand seventy-six pounds and ninety-nine pence, okay. which I believe Eden puts you third. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'll take that. My sneaker knowledge maybe should improve a bit, yeah. <laughs> but I'll take that for a first go. Well, guys, th thanks for watching. Hopefully, next time uh, for the next episode of Unedited, Melbo's made his way back from wherever he is in the world now. Uh, thanks again to Eden. Yeah, thanks no again. worries. Thank you. It's been great.